All right, so Jamal Hill versus Alex Pereira. The main event of UFC 300 is just a few weeks away now. And let me tell you, Jamal Hill cannot wait to get in the UFC's octagon. And more importantly, get his hands on Alex Pereira and put this whole mythical fighter business to bed. Bro, I'm knocking him the f out. He's, he's, he's overrated, okay? He's not the man that everybody thinks he is. He is not the bogeyman. And this fight is a mismatch. That's according to Jamal Hill, the former light heavyweight champion of the world that became the champ by going out there and beating Glover Teixeira, the coach of Alex Pereira, okay? All the Raivers and the Teixeiras and all the rest of it. Here's what Jamal had to say. He said, it's truly a mismatch, you know? Can he catch me and knock me out? He's been fighting for a long time. He has strikes, he has power. Yes, it's a possibility to get caught and lose. But short of that, short of something getting through and catching me and just putting me away, he gets his ass whooped every single way. He only has one way to win this fight. One way. Yeah. He's not going to... Anybody who thinks he's going to outclass me is out of their minds. This man only has one way to win this fight. So, of course... Jamal Hill brimming with confidence because, listen, outside of getting caught in an armbar against Paul Craig, the man's undefeated. And when you're undefeated, confidence is always at its absolute highest. But when he says that Alex only has one way to win, he's talking about the striking. But of course, does Jamal Hill have other ways to win? I'm not sure if he does. He's not a very heavy wrestling-based fighter, okay? I'm sure he can shoot a double leg takedown and a single leg. Okay, of course we can. I'm sure he can do an arm bar and a rear naked choke, okay? But is he likely to do that in a fight? Is that the way that he fights? Is that the way he wins? Is that the way he became champion of the world? No, he beat Glover by sprawling and brawling. Of course, he tore his Achilles tendon, stepped aside, the division moved along. Alex beat Yiri and Alex beat the fourth former or current champion in only seven fights in his career which kind of got me thinking because that is a remarkable achievement. Alex Pereira has done some massive, massive things. So Alex Pereira, only 36 years old and only with a record of 9-2 and two in mixed martial arts. Of course, the man lost his MMA debut, okay? He got caught in a rear naked choke. The man's a kickboxer. When he was a glory kickboxing two-weight division champion, he was one of the baddest men on the planet and a man that actually beat Israel Adesanya twice in glory kickboxing. Of course, since then, he's been almost untouchable. He does have that one loss via knockout to Israel Adesanya in the rematch. In the rematch that's pissing off Sean Strickland, by the way, because he feels like he should get the same luxury. It's not how it works, unfortunately. But 11 fights, 9 wins, Two losses, seven knockouts, zero submissions. Jamal Hill on the flip side, I think he's kind of got a similar record, okay? The man gets it all done on the feet. Just look at that knockout that he had against Johnny Walker. Incredible. Put it all together, 13 fights, 12 wins, one loss. The one loss, as I said to Paul Craig, outside of that, seven knockouts as well, okay? So I think this fight plays out on the feet. It's a tremendous main event and I'm very intrigued by it, but... This is why I'm doing this video, because this kind of got me thinking about Alex Pereira. We know that in seven fights in the UFC, he's beaten four former champions, which is unbelievable, okay? And it got me thinking, has he beat more champions than anybody else? And of course, the answer to that question is a massive, resounding no. No, he hasn't. Far from it. To even think about that would be ridiculous. And it makes you think... Who's the GOAT? Who is the greatest of all time? Now, recently, Dana White has been doing some interviews. He sat down and he was asked this very question. He said, listen, without a shadow of a doubt, something like that, the greatest of all time is Johnny Bones Jones, okay? Nobody can debate who's the greatest of all time. It's absolutely positively John Jones. No, he's never been beat in the octagon ever. <laughs> the, the other thing is that you have to factor in too is longevity. You can hate all you want. John Jones is the greatest of all time. And it's not Habib Nurmagomedov, even though a lot of people, and I'm a huge fan of Khabib, I love his career, I love the guy, I'm a huge fan, and he's incredible. He's never lost a round. But he ain't the greatest of all time. I think that Habib had the potential to be in the running for that. He didn't. He just didn't stick around a lot. First of all, he, he, he had injuries that, you know, he should have been where he got a lot sooner had he not had the injuries that he had and the setbacks in his career. But there's no doubt. Habib is one of the all-time greats. And he isn't even on the top five list for the fighters that have won the most title fights, okay? This will blow your mind. Who's won the most title fights in the history of the UFC? 
It ain't Alex Pereira either, okay? Number one, Johnny Bones Jones. 16 times he has walked into a UFC's octagon for a world title fight, and 16 times he has walked out the victor. That is unbelievable. And at number two, we got George St. Pierre. Shout out to George, Canada's finest and one of the very best in the goddamn world. When it comes to bouts, 15. When it comes to wins in title fights, 13. 12 at welterweight, and of course, one. A middle. Okay, we don't want to talk about that one. <laughs> now, tied with George at number two is Randy the Natural Couture, who actually had 15 title fights, but he went nine and six. Won nine, lost six of them. So very, very impressive. The fact that you step into 15 title fights is insane. But still, no mention of Alex Pereira. Certainly no mention of Habib. That is not a slight. I am not talking shit. Number four, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. A man that always kind of gets forgotten about. A man that was just grappling and beating a 260-pound jiu-jitsu player. Demetrius Johnson is nowhere near 160 pounds. And at 125 pounds, where he competed 14 title fights, you're making a lot of money when you're stepping into pay-per-views, when you're fighting for the belt, when you're taking a percentage of the revenue, you're making some proper dough. And for Demetrius, 14 title fights, 12 wins, two losses, one of which was, of course, to the king of cringe, Henry Cejudo. And who's number five in the top five of title fights of all time? The number of title fights, of course it is, my old friend, Anderson Silva. The Spider, and in my opinion, one of the GOATs, simple as that. 13 title fights, 11 wins, two losses. Of course, that will be to Chris Wyman. One time, Goofy Duran got knocked out. The next one, the rematch, where he snapped his leg. So anyway, something to think about there. Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. I don't know who wins this fight. Two tremendous strikers. Two tremendous fighters. I think on paper, given the pedigree, given the experience, I, I think... Pereira's the better technical striker, but Jamal Hill is just a scrapper. He's more of a street fighter. He's more of a tough bastard, and he's a man that you should not underestimate. So, can't wait for that fight. But as I say, the point of this video really was to talk about, because I did start thinking, well, Alex Pereira's doing some crazy things, man. He's beaten four champions. If he beats Jamal, then he's beaten five champions in eight fights. That's insane. It's like the man only fights champions. He certainly only fights the very best fighters out there. And I thought, as he fought and beat the most champs, of course, I was miles away, okay? John Jones won, George St. Pierre, Randy Couture, Demetrius Johnson, and Anderson Silva. And of course, on that list, there was nowhere to be seen the name Habib the Magomedov. This is number one bullshit. But that doesn't matter. Habib is the goal for other reasons. Undefeated, that's definitely something to be respected. The man never lost a round again. That kind of creates this narrative that the man was just unbeatable. But what makes it a GOAT, in your opinion? Is it the number of fights, the number of title fights, the number of title fight wins, or just never losing a single second or a single round? No man alive can argue that Habib Namagamadov is one of the best. I mean, let's be honest, he won the belt against Alaya Quinta, defended against McGregor, then Dustin Poirier, then Justin Gagey, and then he walked away, okay, with dignity and respect for his late father and, of course, his mother, um, anyway, what do you think about Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill? Do you think Alex Pereira is overrated? Do you think Jamal Hill is maybe underestimating him a little bit? And what do you think about that top five list, you know? Anyway, who would be your goal? Lots of things to talk about. Come at me in the comment section. Hope you're all well. Subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you soon.